Oh, and y'all need today one of those. Morning. He's thinking about it. <laughs> Me? Okay. Okay, so it's all. If we got one minute till class. No, biophysics? Uh-uh. I was wondering if it's important to have um, programming classes for that. For biophysics? I don't know about biophysics. How about biochemistry? Is it important to have, like, well, Python, Java? It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt, but I don't think it's required. It's okay. not required. But, it, I mean, it, you would have, like, something that other people didn't. But, um, look at that. Because I have experience with it from high school. It's just college. I got it, um, I took it all as 200, and I'm double picturing it, so I got it waived mm -hmm. on my computer science 130 with the OIS 200. So I was, and my goal is, um, physician scientist, because I want to go to medical school, and I also want to go to physician school as well. So you're in the PhD. Mm -hmm. So I don't... If I don't, I don't think it's required for what you are going for, but it wouldn't hurt. I mean, like, if you're interested in it. I, I am. I'm just, I wanted, I, I didn't want to, like, get, you know, rejected because I didn't have, like, a, a, like a stupid Alice class over here. No, no, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. But, but why don't you um, come out of the office outside of class and, uh, and we can talk some more about it. What's your office at? I'm right down the hall. I'm 132. Okay. So down the hall and on the left after the main doors. All right. Then um, what do you say? Um, Tuesday, Thursday before noon. Okay. And then Monday, Wednesday in the afternoon. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll try to come visit for tomorrow. Okay. Um, before noon. Cool. It depends whenever I'm done with my midterm. Okay. Good luck. All right. Thank you. My name is Seth, by the way. Seth, nice to meet you. All right, let's see, you guys. I'm putting up attendance. I'm going to try to put up attendance. There we are. Okay. So y'all can go ahead and check in on attendance whenever you get a second. And if you're here in the classroom, you need one of these sheets over here. Let's see. And I want to go to Moodle. All right, how are we doing today? Oh, I need my chat. I don't have my chat. That is what I am missing. Fine for now. Fine for now. Good. Good. All right. So did y'all hear about the, uh, the mathematician who is scared of negative numbers? He would stop at nothing to avoid them. Uh, not even a giggle, y'all, on Zoom. Not even a giggle. Early morning. Early morning. <laughs> I have my sound on, yes. Like, even, even, even chat, I'm not getting a, a response. <laughs> Could, be that tired. Could be that everybody's tired. Could be. That's the problem. You're right. That is the problem with the math. Look, an LOL. See, that's what I needed. I needed an LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad some people laughed, <laughs> even though they're muted. 
All right, so we've got our, we've got our good joke for the day. Um, I have, so what you were supposed to do for last night was just chapter eight, section one, right? Just chapter eight, section one. Hmm? So reading section two is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. All right, so y'all know with this flipped class thing, it's really important that y'all watch those lectures before you come to class. Otherwise, you're lost as to what we're doing in class, right? And I, I do realize that y'all have been struggling with that quite a bit, quite a bit. So um, I'm going to, we're still gonna have some lectures that are gonna be posted online, but I'm gonna switch to doing one day where we do a practice problems and work through, and then the other two days I'll do lecture. And then we'll have another day of practice stuff. And then I'll do two days of lecture, okay? So you will have some that you need to watch. So look, look at what I did on the schedule, okay? So if you look on the schedule, if I can pull this over, I still want my chat so I can still see and hear people. Okay, so here, section eight, right? There's one to watch. Now, here's how I'm gonna do it. For tomorrow, right, you'll have one section to watch recorded and then we'll have one in class. So it'll kind of break it up, okay? So I'm hoping that that works a little bit better for y'all. Monday, one recorded, one in class. Okay, so I'm hoping that that gives you a little break you need to get caught up so that you know what's going on when we're doing stuff in class. Okay. Our next class, we need to have separate section two and section three. Section two, and you can read section three after you come to class. That's okay. okay. We're doing 8.3 in class. We're going to do 8.3 in class. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to watch two and then we'll do three in class. Okay. You can't see it? The question is the attendance is not showing up. Was anybody able to do attendance? No, <laughs> hold on. I must have something not right. There's, oh no, it's not, it's not going. You're right, it's not going. It is, Nope. This little thing, I can't see anything. Okay, there we go. All right, I thought I clicked it, but apparently I did not click it. Okay, it is clicked. I apologize. Okay, where were we? Here. All right. Okay, so everybody understand the new, the new plan? Yeah, any questions about the new plan? No? Okay. I have one other thing that I want to talk to y'all about. Um, I know y'all are kind of worried that your whole grade depends on your exam scores, right? So I'm adding to your exam scores 10% um, based on these self-check things that I put up for y'all. So where are we? Okay. And I have to go in and change the settings on them. So I've only I had a chance to do the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 10% of your grade that comes from these self checks. I'm going to let you take it three times and I'm going to take your highest grade. And then that will count for 10% of your overall grade. So however many we get through, that's how many will contribute to you 10%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it do the day before your exam. Like if we have chapter seven and eight, all of the ones from seven and eight are due the night before your exam at 9 p.m. So you can decide when it works for you to do it. I'm not putting that all, no, 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 just the ones, the past self checks won't count because I can't, I can't go back and do that, but I can do it from going forward. So just the ones on chapter seven and eight, you don't have to go back and do them all. I mean, they're available to you, if you want to, <laughs> but it's not gonna to contribute to that 10% of your grade. Will they be, they will be untimed. They will be untimed, untimed. And you get three chances. 
10% of your grade. Does this include? Yes, this includes the animation self checks. Yes, I did the first one. So you can see the first one. Um, see how you have three attempts allowed and it opens today and then it will close Tuesday before our October 21st exam on that Wednesday. And the grading method is highest grade. Next Wednesday. Okay. It's only on chapters seven and eight. Okay. okay. That makes sense to y'all? So I'm working on me and Moodle. I'm learning Moodle. Um, so I was able to move your exams. How much does, okay, so let me show you, let me show you something. It's a good question. Let's see, I don't wanna, I'm gonna pause my sharing. What, I'm not even showing on the screen, but that's okay. I'm gonna show, I wanna show you something on the grade book, but I don't wanna show everybody's scores. So I'm gonna stop my share for just a second, and then I'm gonna show you. Okay, because I don't wanna show everybody's scores. It is the same weight as the test. I'm gonna show you my grade book setup, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna share. Let me reshare. I just don't want to uh, share grades. Okay, so this is the way my grade book is set up, right? We have our exams, one, two, you'll have exam three, you'll have exam four, and then you'll have your final semester cumulative exam. So they're all weighted the same. Now, I have to figure out how to weight my other category that's gonna be all of your quizzes, right? only 10%. So it's actually going to end up these being like 18% of your grade and then this being 10%. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Dr. Lowe is going to help me out. He's promised he's going to help me out. He's a guru. Um, so he's going to help me configure this, but that's the plan. So we have two categories. One category is exams and the other is other and those are all your self checks that are like the just the read and answer the question, and then the other ones that are the animation ones. Any questions on that? Good. Yeah? Did you answer? So is this only for this section? Only for, so it's gonna start with this exam. So the ones that it is, okay, I can't go, I don't know if I can go back. Wait, let me do this. Not, yes for the next exam. Yes for the next exam. No, because you didn't know about it then. That's not fair. Yeah, no. So all the other ones, like they have no grade attached to them, right? You've noticed that you've taken them and it never affects your grade. So starting on part three, this is our exam three material, right? So it'll be this animation, and this self-check, and then this animation, this animation, this self-check. Are these the only great opportunities for class? Tests and self-checks, yes. <coughs> yes. I don't see the animation. No, because I have to go in and I have to go in and edit them. So they're they're actually hidden. I just unhid them from, well, no, I just hid them so I can fix them before y'all try to answer them because I don't want y'all to try to do it and then I can't change the settings because y'all have done it. You know what I mean? So um, so give me like till Dr. Lowe can tutor me <laughs> on Moodle and I'll get that fixed. Okay. But this one, if you want to try one out, this one should be set. This chapter seven one. Okay. All right. Any other questions? You're welcome, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I am listening to y'all. I am listening to y'all. Okay, yeah. All right, good. <laughs> I see your head nodding. I'm, I'm happy to see head nodding. Okay. All right, so section one. We're going to try this. We're going to try this. What I really want y'all to do, we don't have too many people, and I think y'all can do it without, um, without like yelling. I know y'all are six feet apart, but I really want y'all to work together as a group. Um, maybe the four of y'all could get together and then the four of y'all could get together. You know what I mean? You don't have to move. You don't actually have to move. So don't get up and go anywhere. And I'm gonna, I'm going to my Zoom people, 
I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms. And what I want you to do is I want you to go, here we go, chapter eight, section one, discussion questions. So everybody in class got one of these, but y'all have this on Moodle. So there are a couple of discussion questions. Um, what I want us to do is like one at a time. So do one, we'll come back together as a class. Do one, we'll come back together as a class. But if you find that your group's ahead of the pack, go ahead and keep it rolling. Um, I'm gonna give you a few minutes on each one to kind of work on it. So my Zoom people, do y'all know where y'all going to get this question? And I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms, but I'm not gonna pre-assign. I'm gonna randomly put y'all in groups, okay? I have them printed, good, okay. So y'all have them, y'all know where you're going. Okay, so now we're gonna try to go in breakout rooms. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. All right, so we're gonna put you into four to five participants per room, so it's eight rooms. I will come and check on y'all. That's fine, you, you and Melissa are by default in a, uh, in a group, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I will come back and check on y'all, but I will give you about uh, five minutes inside of your, your groups to work on just number one, just the first page, okay? Any questions before I create the breakout rooms? Okay, well, good luck. And I think you can contact me if you need something. Cross their fingers, it works. Okay, open all rooms. All right, so y'all who are in the classroom can go ahead and join up. So y'all might have to get, y'all might have to, if two of them come into this row from either way, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, if y'all mind. Okay, Jasmine. We have a few people who haven't joined. Hmm. I don't know how that works. And you just have to like click your join. Jake, see like Jacob. Oh, breakout room seven. I'm gonna move. Move to breakout room. Oh, oh no, maybe I should not have done that. I'm gonna move you to. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Was there a chat? Can I join a room?
Unmute. Breakout rooms. Okay. Oh, oh, when I click close, then it closes in a minute. Y'all, y'all got it about close? No? Yeah, the first one, just the first one. The first one, okay. All right, so we're getting everybody back. So everybody should be back in about eight seconds. <laughs> okay. Can I hide this? <laughs> All right, where are my meeting controls? I want to see my chat. No? Maybe I need to close this. Do y'all see my meeting? Oh, here. Ho ho. Okay. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying. Oh, I need to screen share again. That's what I need to do. I didn't realize it stops my screen sharing when y'all go to breakout rooms. Okay. Now that makes sense. Yeah. We trying. Okay. So what did we say for first messengers? Who are first messengers? C and H. So insulin, C and H. Insulin and epinephrine. What's another word for a first messenger that we kind of use in general language? A what? Well, a hormone is an example, but what have we kind of been calling them? Ligands or ligands, right? Because they bind to a receptor. Good. Um, so what were our receptors? Which ones? E, B, and G. So E, seven pass membrane protein. Does it matter how many times the protein goes through the membrane? No, right? Some of them only go span the membrane once, and some of them are going to like snake up and down into the membrane. It doesn't matter, right? If it's a membrane protein, um, it's highly likely going to be a receptor. Okay, so then uh, B was our single pass, and then G binds our ligand. All right, our second messengers, what did you say? D, F, and A. So D, cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP, that's right. Um, F is diacylglycerol or DAG, and then uh, A can be a kinase or can bind to GTP binding proteins. All right. So now that we just kind of have our terms, what did you say a definition of a first messenger is? It's extracellular. That's very good. What else? Ligands that bind. Right? Okay, so um, give me some examples that were not on our list. Uh, 
testosterone. Test O S T E R O N E. Glucagon, cortisol. A G glucagon, cortisol. Estrogen. These are all good. Ions. Ions can be. Yes. What else? There's one I talked about in the video. Nitric oxide. Uh, what else did we say? Prostaglandins. That's another good one. Good. Okay. So, so the composition of these ligands can be varied, right? It could also be an ion, right? Oh, we said ions like Ca2+, right? So do they have to be organic? No, they don't, right? They're very, very varied. Very varied. Very, very varied. <laughs> All right. How about um, a function? We said a function. Okay. Uh, uh, receptors. What are receptors? They bind ligands, that's true. They bind, do they bind any old ligand? Like they, one receptor can bind a bunch of different ligands? They bind specific, specific ligands. And you could say, or first messengers, right? Where do they bind them? If we're gonna do a good definition. In the membrane? No. On the extracellular surface, right? On extracellular surface. Okay, what's their function? Their function is not just to bind, that's what they do. Sometimes it's a conformational change, but, but like what's the function of it? That's, that's what happens to trigger downstream signaling. Good, 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 good. So, so that, that downstream signaling, we call that signal, yes, to induce signal transduction. Downstream effects, that's right, that's what, um, Signal transduction's goal is to get downstream effects. I like that. Induce downstream effects. That's really nice. Stream effects. Okay. All right. Uh, some examples. GPCRs. That is an example. We're gonna, that's a big classification of them. Yes. What else? Not cyclic AMP. Yeah, you're a little ahead of the game. So if you have, let's say you have insulin, what's your receptor? The insulin receptor. <laughs> this is this is where it gets real nice. This is it gets really nice. Um, so the the so some examples. Insulin receptor. Anybody remember any more from the what? Glucagon receptor. I'm just gonna put ETC dot, 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 right? <laughs> Y'all get the point. Most of them are named very nicely, most of them. How about some second messengers? So intracellular, that's great, INT, intracellular, right? Um, signaling molecules. That are what? Generated. Good. So intracellular signaling molecules that amplify receptor generated signals. Whew, that's that's good. All right, so give me some examples. IP3. <laughs> what else? 
C G M P, cyclic G M P, uh huh. C A M P, uh huh. Ooh, I don't know why I put a comma there. C A M P, sorry. Good. So D A G, somebody says in the chat, D A G. What else? C A two plus. Do you notice how ions can be both second messengers and first messengers? Yeah. So you got to be careful that you know where they are in the pathway, right? And what do they do? What's their function? What, what's their big goal? They're going to amplify. They want to amplify it, but how are they going to do that? They phosphorylate. I'm hearing some things. They, they do things to target proteins. Sometimes they do things to upregulate them. Sometimes they do things to downregulate them, right? Okay, so let's just say they regulate, they regulate um, protein activity. And there are multiple ways that they can do that. People were talking in here in the classroom about phosphorylation, right? That is an example. Okay, let's take one step back and let's look at specifically our receptor. What are three different ways a receptor can initiate signal transduction within a cell? So they can have protein modification functions like what? They can have, so one is have. Modification functions. If you're going to add a phosphoryl group, what do we call that? What kind of a protein are you? What kind of an enzyme? Kinase. A kinase. Yes. Okay. It's an interesting way. They can undergo conformational changes. Um, they do go under... They, Let's put this, undergo conformational changes. But what is that going to do? Usually, you are going to undergo a conformational change in order to activate the kinase activity, in order to do anything. So you could start with that, but what's the activity, what's the conformational change going to induce? Say it again. A non-covalent what? And it could be covalent, but an interaction between what? The receptor and, and, and another protein within the cell. That's good. So undergo conformational changes um, to interact with um, intracellular proteins, right? So undergo conformational changes really is the first step for like all of these. Yeah, or, or it could open a channel, right? So you could interact with a channel protein and then the channel protein opens, that could happen. What else do they do? There's a third thing that they do. Well, that's the down, that's way downstream. That's way downstream. I'm thinking closer up to the top. And y'all know the answer, you're just not thinking about it. I know you know the answer, because you just, I just made you talk about it. <laughs> What's between a receptor and those downstream target activities? You're gonna make a secondary messenger protein, right? Right? Okay, so create, Secondary messenger proteins. And, and where is that? Is that extracellular? Is that intracellular? Intracellular. Okay. And I know I didn't number these. I numbered these on my on my sheet. So this is four, right? And then come down to the next page is five. Okay, so I don't think four is probably gonna take you too long. What time is it? 
So work on as much as you can and I will give you, anybody have any complaints before I put y'all back in breakout rooms? Anybody on Zoom have any, like I didn't do this right, I should have done something else? Okay, I don't think it's gonna put you in the same groups again. I think it's gonna randomly group you guys again. So brace yourselves, <laughs> I'm gonna put you in. So try to complete as much as you can and I'll give y'all probably 10 minutes and that should give us enough time to go over it again, okay? And if you have something, I don't know, you can send me an email. I have my phone next to me. I can see when my email pops up. If something happens, send me an email. <laughs> All right, breakout rooms. Ooh, I think it kept y'all in the same rooms. Y'all okay with that? That's kind of cool. Let's do it for today. We're gonna stay in the same rooms, okay? So I'm gonna open all the rooms, good luck. See you back in a few. All right, and y'all in the classroom can, can go for it. Is this working out for y'all in the classroom? Y'all okay? All right, so I gotta watch my time. I should be watching my email too in case somebody. <laughs> has an issue. Oh, and I guess I could close the uh, attendance poll. Oh. You haven't clicked in by now. Oh no, it didn't. Did it put it in the same?
if y'all type in the chat, like y'all aren't on the Zoom, right? Y'all who are in here are not on the Zoom. I wonder if they type in the chat while they're in the break room. Does it show up on our chat? It does. Okay. Okay. So I can put a message and they'll get it. Okay. You did this yesterday? Something similar? Yeah. Y'all have to tell me what works and what doesn't work. You'll be honest. <laughs> Because because y'all will be in the other position on Wednesday. Y'all will be, you know. Y'all can talk to each other. Are people? I wonder if people are getting dropped out.
That is so weird. Okay. Did I new share? See now I have to share. I was sharing. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll. We're, we're a work in progress. We're a work in progress. Okay. So our first one right here, what is this one? A G protein coupled receptor or G protein coupled receptor, GPCR. So what's generally going to happen with a GPCR? The receptor and G protein are held together. It's inactive. So the state that's in the picture, this is active or inactive? Active. This is inactive. This is inactive, right? And when the receptor binds to a ligand, then this component right here is going to move away and disassociate. So it's not always a positive association that's being induced by our receptor. It's actually a release that causes activation. Okay, so release of the G protein. So the G protein coupled receptor is a receptor plus a G protein. That's why they call it G protein coupled receptor. Make sense? Yeah, okay. All right, um, and then there's, there's one main downstream event for all G protein coupled receptors. Activation of adenylate, the E N Y L A T E, is that right? Adenylate cyclase and PLC, phospholipase C. Good. Okay, so now what? Let's do our next one. Oh, I want a different color. Okay, let's do our next one. What's the next one? Receptor, C E, receptor, tyrosine. Kinase. What's the receptor tyrosine kinase? It phosphorylates on tyrosine residues on target proteins. And then, and then you have downstream effects, right? So that's big general downstream signaling, right? There's not a common pathway there. Okay, how about our three here together? Tumor necrosis factor, good, tumor necrosis factor. So this works by forming that trimer. It's the trimer formation that makes it active. Okay, and what about the last one? This one right here. Nuclear. So which one of these does not belong? Like, I feel like we're back on Sesame Street, right? Remember that? So our nuclear receptor that's on the inside of the cell is the only one that doesn't sit on the outside of the membrane. So what does a nuclear receptor do? Modulates what? Gene expression, right? which then controls protein expression and so on and so on and so on. So this could be a protein-protein interaction or a what? Protein DNA. Okay, good. All right, how did y'all like this? Where I gave you some unlabeled junk. What is all that stuff? <laughs> what is the phosphoinositide cascade? Oh. What does it do? What's the goal? Gener but the goal is to generate G N E R generate second messengers, just like what's on the chat. Second messengers. Right? We gotta start this cascade. Cascade means we're gonna amplify that signal. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by generating secondary messengers. So we start with what is this big molecule here that's kind of two big pieces? PIP2. What is PIP2? Phospho. 
phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate or bisphosphate. Okay, so then what happens? Phospholipase C, PLC, cleaves it, right? So now you have how many secondary messengers? Now we have two secondary messengers. What are these two secondary messengers? The AG and IP3. Good. Okay. So now, what's going to happen? How, do, how does this work, right? Okay, we know that this reaction occurs in the cell. The, we have to have, first of all, this is a receptor mediated activity, right? So we have to have a receptor. That's what all of your pathways are going to start with, even if it's in the nucleus, but it, it'll just look different. So you have a receptor that gets activated. And then what happens? It activates PLC. And it could take multiple steps to get to that point. It depends on which one you're talking about, right? But it's always going to activate PLC. When we activate PLC, we convert from PIP2 into two different things, IP3 and DAG. Okay, so tell me what, what does DAG specifically do? Activates PKC. What is PKC? And there's so many abbreviations. Protein kinase C, which means that there are going to be multiple protein kinases if this one's C. Okay, so, so at this level, these things are secondary messengers, right? So just so you kind of have an idea of where you are in the pathway, binds and activates PKC. All right. So now what does IP3 do? Channels in ER. Good. Activates those channels in the ER. Now, that kind of has a twofold effect, right? You've got calcium 2 plus in where is calcium 2 plus? In the cytosol, right? In the cytosol. So now it's floating around. So what can that calcium do? Well, it can also do the same thing that DAG did and it can amplify PKC activity. What does PKC do? It's a kinase, right? So adds a phosphate group to, we'll just say in general, target proteins, right? Because that can vary. Now, we got one last step over here. What, what is going on over here? This is an example of a target protein. So here's a target protein. Okay. And our target protein is affected directly by the calcium? No. We need this, this purple thing right here. This is calmodulin. I love that y'all put things in the chat because <laughs> it helps me spell. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the calmodulin binds calcium. And once that calmodulin binds the cal calcium, now we can go in and then activate whatever our target protein is. So down here, what's happening down here? What do we call these things that are down here? Downstream events. Right? There's upstream events, there's downstream events. Y'all are probably used to hearing upstream and downstream with DNA, right? Here's your DNA, your gene of sequence that you're interested in, and upstream goes this way, downstream goes that way, right? Same thing in a, in a molecular pathway, a chemical pathway in the cell, okay? All right, so for next time, y'all are going to watch section two, and we'll do section three in class. Any questions? And I did have one other question for y'all before y'all go. How many people have multiple exams on next Wednesday? Anybody? 
Day before. A few people are saying they banned the day before. What is in the green box? Uh, the green box is PLC. Oh, I did PLP. PLC. Thank you. Two on Tuesday. Tuesday to the day before. Jeez, and Pete. I will think about it. I will think about it. I will think about it. I'll get back to y'all. I'll think about it. Okay. All right. Any questions? Helpful? Yes. Worked? If something, if the Zoom, y'all who are on Zoom, if y'all would like tell me worked, didn't work, this was good, this was not good. I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty good. Was it good? Okay. And you can always send me a, um, a, a, an email if you don't want to put it on the chat. That's fine with me. Um, but I just kind of want to, I've been wanting to do these breakout rooms and I just can't get the, I can't get the put per, certain people in. So we're just going to roll with it. All right. Well, y'all, that's good. Good. I'm glad everybody liked it. All right. So, um, see y'all next time. Dr. Lee. Really let me uh, let me end let me end this. If anybody anybody have any questions on Zoom before I end this, I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Tristan. Um, how many specific reaction cascade mechanisms in Chapter Eight and Chapter Seven with all the enzymes and all the substrates do we have to memorize? Like every particular substrate of and every particular enzyme for both these chapters. I will, I will put it together for you. That's a good question. That's a good, that's a legitimate question. Um, I will, I, and I'm going to give that to everybody all at once, but that's a, that's a good question. So I will answer that for everybody um, in the next class. How's that sound? Yeah, that's great. I also had a question about um, uh, disulfide bonds. Sure. Is, so do they not exist in a transmembrane uh, part that's, that's on the outside of the transmembrane protein since since the outside environment is um, reducing? It depends. You don't know that the outside environment's reducing. Well, the cytosol's reducing regardless, right? Well, the general cytosol, but you have to look at the local environment. Sometimes the local environment is different. Remember how we talked about that? Like you can have a pH of a solution, but depending on the, the extreme local environment of those side chains can change how they interact. So it's not just the general cytosol is reducing or not. Is, so that's, that's, that's the protein itself making modifications. It's not the cytosol being different in different parts of the cell. It's not really that. It's the, it's the protein protecting its disulfide bonds in some way. Yes, if it's folded in a particular way and water is <laughs> excluded or water is included, we'll change it, things like that. Um, and the, the, the other amino acid residue side chains that are in the area. Thank you. Yeah, anybody else? I have a question about number one. You have to somewhere to be okay. Well, why don't you um? Why don't you set up a Zoom or? It's nothing really. It's eight seven different. Or take a picture and write me a question. Yeah, okay. it was just a little. It was just. Oh, it was just whether or not you were able to overlook a little typo in my. Oh yeah, that typos are okay. So typos little, are okay. Basically, I just got basically long story short, I got the I mixed up the order how for like adding the TLC. Just write me a note. Okay. I, write I, me I a note. And that's fine. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, for number one. Can for number one? A. Yes, ma'am. One. Let me go up there. Hold on. Hang on. <laughs> okay, number one. For A. I see how uh, it could be second messenger because it's either a kinase or bound to ATP proteins. But do you think it could be a receptor too? Just kind of like randomly because tyrosine. Um, yeah. Receptor or receptor yeah. tyrosine kinases, and then 
like the other, um, what is it, the gene coupled protein receptors? Well, so, okay, so usually the receptor can be a kinase, but usually it's our, it's our second messengers that end up being the GTP binding proteins. Like think about the G protein coupled receptor. The receptor binds to the G protein. It's the G protein that actually has the binding site to the GTP and GDP. Mm -hmm. So I think that was my question. Like I didn't know if the protein complex found GTP or if that was something else. Usually it's not the receptor. Usually, I'm not going to say it's never, but usually it's the, the receptor um, that induces a conformational change, and then the molecules that are attached to the receptor can then bind GTP or bind GDP or ATP or ADP, those kind of molecules. Okay, gotcha. Anybody else? I like that I can still do questions with the people who are on Zoom. It's nice. Okay, so I think that's it. If you have any questions, send me an email. And uh, I guess I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>